Hi, this is Sahana. Today we are going to understand partial views in ASP.NET Core MVC application. To understand partial view, first we must understand what is view file. View file is a razor marker file with .cshtml extension and used to design user interface. Now, what is partial view? You can think of partial view as a kind of a file that that can become part of a view file and render HTML output inside that file. This is our ASP.NET Core MVC application. Here you can see we have a views folder. Inside views folder, here we have different folders, home, sheet and tutorial. Here you can see the files with extension .cshtml. These are the view files. Here we have different view files that are used for different purpose. Now we need to create partial views. but but the question is, why do we need to create partial views? We should know when to go for partial views, right? Only then we can make a right decision on whether to go for normal view and to, or to make use of partial view. We go for partial views to simplify the view file by breaking up large markup file into smaller partial views. Next important use of partial views is to reduce code redundancy. There will be situation where same piece of code will be used in multiple view files then what we can do is we can take out that particular piece of code and create partial view and wherever and wherever necessary we can use that partial view we are back at our application let me quickly show you how this application looks this is our application here we have a header footer and here we have home tutorial and contact us as of now we have implemented tutorial functionality if i click on tutorial we get tutorial data displayed here. At the UI level, you may not understand the importance of partial views. When it comes to building more robust and manageable application, then partial views play important role. While deciding whether to go for partial views or not, you should make a careful decision. If we take the example of this privacy.cshtml, this view file has only three lines of code. In this case, there is no need for any partial view. If we take the example of create tutorial.cshtml or edit tutorial view, there may be a scope of creating partial views. We create partial views just like normal views with .cshtml extension. Then we write necessary markup inside that file. I'll quickly walk you through the code so that when we create partial views, it will be easy for you to understand. Right now, our application is very basic. This is our home page. And here we have contact us page, nothing much is there. Then here we have tutorial. In this page, we are displaying the tutorial name and description. We can add new tutorial. Here, if you notice, create tutorial action method inside create tutorial is responsible for this form. And here I can edit. Again, I get a form, I can submit. Here we have views folder, inside views folder, we have home, sheet and tutorial. If I expand tutorial, you can find here we have create tutorial.cshtml. We have a form here. Then we have edit tutorial.cshtml again. If you look at these two view files, here markup is almost similar. In create tutorial, we are using uh, this tutorial model. And here we have a form and inside this form we are displaying name description and we have submit and cancel button you can find the same thing inside edit tutorial.cshtml we have a perfect scenario to implement partial views the main intention of using partial views is to reduce coded code redundancy what we are going to do now is we are going to move this whole bunch of code to partial views and we are going to call that partial view here. Inside views folder, we have home, shade and tutorial. You can create wherever you want. I choose shade folder. The reason I choose shade folder is if I create inside shade folder, then that partial view will be available throughout the application. I will right click. Add. Then I will select view. This is just like adding normal view. Here we, here we are going to select razor view empty, add. I will name it as underscore tutorial form fields. Here if you notice, 
uh, we are starting the name with underscore. This is the naming convention that is suggested to create partial views. It is always good to follow conventions. I will add. Here, let's remove all this code. We are at createtutorial.cshtml. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this out. I'll come back to this partial view and I'll paste it here. Here, we are getting error because these fields are taken from model. Right now, our partial view is not receiving any model data. We have to work on it. Now, we are done with our first step that is creating partial view. Next step is to call this partial view. We are going to fix these errors in a while. There are two ways to call partial views. The first way is to use partial tag helper. This is the partial tag helper. We have to specify. We have to specify the name of our partial view. Name is underscore tutorial form fields. We have created the partial view and we have called the partial view. Still, we have these errors. How to fix these errors? We have these errors because we are we have to implement one more step that is we have to pass model data to this partial view now how to pass data to partial views again it's very simple here we are calling this partial view while calling this partial view here if you notice uh, we are using the name attribute to call this partial view the same way we have one more attribute that is model and we have to specify the model name i will say model in this partial view we should specify the model name here model is tutorial error is gone we are done with this create tutorial.cshtml our next job is to come to this edit tutorial.cshtml then remove this whole bunch of code replace with simple line called the partial name i will save now it's time to verify our changes i will run the application let's see if everything is fine I'll click on tutorial and I click on add new tutorial. Uh, create tutorial.cshtml is called. Okay, it's working. I will submit. See, this new tutorial has been added. So, create tutorial.cshtml is working perfectly fine. I'll click on this. I'll click on edit button. Here, edit tutorial. When I click on edit, Edit tutorial.cshtml is called. I will update and I will submit. So it's working. Here we are calling this partial view using partial tag helper. As I mentioned earlier, there is one more approach to call this partial view that is using HTML helper. If we want to use HTML helper, this is how we write. Here, here we are using await keyword. Then we are calling this html.partial async. Here this is the partial view name and we are passing model data. What I personally feel is in your application, if you are using tag helpers everywhere, it is good to go for partial tag helper so that we can maintain consistency. Instead of tag helpers, if you are using HTML helpers in your application, uh, then go for this syntax. That's it for today. I hope that things are clear. If you have any doubt, you can leave a comment. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.